Hi, my name is Rob Shaw. I'm the founder of the Mountain Tactical Institute, and this presentation is on uh, MTI's nutritional guidelines. And just updated these. It's March 2021. So this is kind of version two of our um, nutritional guidelines. First, some nutritional and diet fundamentals uh, principles. Uh, fundamental principles going into this presentation. And number one, uh, what you eat is more important than how much you eat. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but what you eat is much more important than how much. Number two, any diet or nutritional plan that makes you constantly hungry isn't sustainable. Um, so if you're doing a diet and you're hungry all the time, you're not going to stay on it. Three, eat whole foods, uh, nothing processed, and you'll eat smaller portions, eat less often, and eat to satiety. Um, so eat whole foods, and uh, that's the way to go. And fourth, you can't outwork a shitty diet. 95% of fat loss is diet-related, and uh, no amount of working out or training uh, can make up for a shitty diet. These are the goals of our nutritional guidelines. Uh, not, number one is to increase lean body mass. And number two is to decrease body fat. And by doing both of these, um, we can build a higher uh, relative strength and strength being strength per body weight. So I want to make you stronger um, without increasing your body weight. And there's two ways to increase a relative strength, either increase your strength or decrease your body weight. So that's what I'm after. If I'm able to um, uh, increase your strength and or cut your body weight um, without losing any strength, then I may, I may, I'll be able to increase your speed over ground for work capacity and endurance. Um, so one of the advantages of losing 10 pounds of extra fat is you don't need to carry that fat up the mountain or you don't need to add it to your ruck weight or you don't need to sprint with it. And uh, losing that 10 pounds will make you faster at doing all of those things. It's just really simple. Number five, everything we do at MTI is aimed at improving uh, mission performance um, for mountain athletes, mountain professionals, and tactical athletes. And number six, keep it simple. We want our guidelines to be simple and easy to follow. How much should I weigh or how much should you weigh? Um, this is one of the uh, things we recently developed. And uh, we need to acknowledge that uh, mountain athletes, mountain professionals, and tactical athletes all have similar work capacity and chassis integrity demands. Chassis integrity is, is core strength, functional core strength. What separates them in terms of fitness programming and thus ideal body weight is strength and endurance demands. What that means, if you have a higher strength demand, you're going to need more muscle, which is going to make you heavier. If you have a higher endurance demand, you won't need as much muscle, and so you can be lighter. So here on either end, on the higher endurance and lower body weight uh, demand are mountain athletes. Um, recreational multi-sport athletes, pro alpinists, rock climbers, free skiers, mountain bikers, kayakers, pro adventure racers. And all these athletes um, have a higher endurance demand than a typical military athlete or tactical athlete. And uh, um, they have a, a lower uh, strength demand. Why do they have a lower strength demand? Because in general, the load they're carrying are, is lighter. Um, so if you're not carrying as much weight up the mountain or around all day, you don't need as much muscle or strength. And what that means is that these type of athletes can, in general, have a lower body weight than athletes of the same height in these other two categories. Between uh, mountain athletes and tactical athletes are mountain professionals. These include mountain guides. Um, often you'll see a mountain guide um, go up the mountain with his clients or her clients. And the mountain guide's pack will be 45 pounds, and the client's pack will be 25 pounds because the guide's carrying, you know, all the rope, extra safety gear, a first aid kit, you know, a radio. So their their pack load is just heavier. That's why they need a higher strength demand. Uh, same for backcountry ski guides, all mountain guides, uh, game wardens, who uh, you know have to carry the similar type of uh, equipment, often a weapon, also uh, ski patrol. Uh, field biologists, uh, forest park rangers, uh, mountain search and rescue, and I would add to this category backcountry hunters. Backcountry hunters packs are generally higher or heavier 
then uh, backpacking packs, and plus you have your weapon, your bow, or your rifle. And then if you do uh, are fortunate enough to uh, get an animal down, you can have you know very heavy uh, load carrying the animal out. So um, that kind of hunters have a higher uh, strength demand in general than a typical mountain athlete. And on the far side over here, we have a higher strength demand, um, and therefore need a higher body weight because the extra muscle that that demands are tactical athletes, uh, military infantry. Um, it's not uncommon for um, military infantry, Wayne Army, whatever, going to ranger school or summer school or on a field exercise to be carrying 70, 80, 90 pound packs plus their weapon. So their load carriage demands are higher than mountain professionals and mountain athletes. Therefore, they have a higher relative strength demand and therefore can have a higher body weight based on their height because they need to be carrying more muscle. Um, this includes wildland firefighters who carry heavy packs, you know, plus their tool, chainsaw, um, axe, whatever. Even law enforcement patrol the detectives, you know, have their body armor, um, their duty belts, and all that can add up to 25, 30 pounds all the time that they're packing around. SWAT, SRT, similar. And then, of course, fire rescue. Um, turnout gear for a fireman can weigh 70 pounds plus their uh, 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 breathing apparatus or including the breathing apparatus and then often they'll get wet when they're um, fighting a fire and so it even gets heavier so um, the load carriage demands for tactical athletes are high so how much should you weigh um, these are uh, MTI's ideal body weight by athlete type and uh, so you'll see here uh, mountain athletes uh, can have a lower body weight uh, by athlete type so I'm 5'7", and you can see uh, for a mountain athlete, for a man, my ideal body weight um, would be uh, 145 pounds. And a mountain professional, 155, because I have higher load carriage demands, therefore I need more muscle. And then for a tactical athlete, 160 pounds, even higher load carriage demands, even a greater need for muscle. So you can see the type of athlete you are based on your height um, dictates uh, your ideal body weight. And you can go ahead and pause the video here and kind of find your height and uh, and uh, your athlete type and work on these charts and kind of uh, identify what I think your ideal body weight should be based on your height for both men and women. Now when it comes to nutrition, um, these are MTI's nutritional guidelines and I've had a couple of major influences in developing these guidelines. The first is the book Why We Get Fat by Gary Taubes. And from this, I learned that what you eat is much more important than how much you eat. And there are certain types of calories he calls bad calories and go directly to fat cells, uh, especially uh, uh, sugar, processed foods, and complex carbs from all grains, breads, and starchy vegetables like potatoes. So you eat these foods and they go right to your fat cells and make you fat. Um, the second book um, is more recent. It's called The P.E. Diet you know, by uh, Ted Nyman. And uh, P.E. stands for the protein to energy ratio. And Nyman uh, simplifies it. He calls energy both uh, carbs plus fat um, with this ratio in your diet. He keeps it simple. If you eat more protein than energy, um, you're going to lose fat. If your protein is equal to energy, you'll pretty much maintain your body fat. And if you um, eat less protein and energy, you'll gain, and all these are body fat. Um, he says for individual foods, meals, and snacks, aim to eat more protein than energy. So you want to choose your, your foods and also um, choose your meals um, and your snacks. So ideally, you're, you're eating a little bit more protein than you are in energy. Um, carbs and fat, and the way to kind of do this is kind of based on weight. So if I'm eating an eight-ounce steak, you know, I, I want to eat uh, eight ounces or less than eight ounces of vegetables. Eight ounces, eight ounces of salad is a lot, so it's actually a lot of vegetables. You know, when you look at 
Okay, so here um, we're going to get into nuts and bolts, uh, MTIs, uh, nutritional guidelines, and get specific with you. If you are an athlete under 40 years old, six days a week, here's what you can eat. Whole foods only, nothing processed. So no processed foods. Uh, start each meal and each snack with whole food protein. Poultry, fish, beef, pork, and eggs. So when you go to get something out of the fridge, start with protein. Um, vegetables, uh, which grow above the ground. So leafy vegetables, mushrooms, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, green beans, tomatoes, cucumbers, avocados, et cetera, avocados, et cetera. So veggies that grow above the ground, you can eat those. They have a high fiber content, and uh, um, you can eat them. Uh, you can eat these foods in moderation. Nuts and nut butters, but no peanuts. Uh, peanuts are actually a bean. Um, seeds, seed butters, non-fat, unflavored Greek yogurt, um, low-fat cottage cheese. You can eat berries in moderation and dark chocolate. And for dark chocolate, you want chocolate that has 85% more uh, cocoa content. What you can drink, coffee, water, bubble water, diet drinks. Um, in terms of alcohol, you can only drink hard liquor, or low-carb uh, seltzer. No beer or wine. Beer will make you fat. Um, under 40 years old, what you can eat, any processed sugar or corn syrup, pastry, candy, pastry, condiments um, with sugar, uh, corn syrup in them. Grains of any type or format. Wheat, corn. Oats, rice, bread, tortillas, rolls, pasta, etc. No grains. Beans. No beans, including peanuts and peanut butter. Peanuts are beans. Um, vegetables that grow beneath the ground. Starchy vegetables like potatoes, sweet potatoes, beets, etc. Um, avoid those. No fruit other than tomatoes, cucumbers, and avocados, which are all technically fruit. And berries in moderation. Especially avoid tropical foods, bananas, mangoes, pineapple, etc. It's just full of sugar. Um, you need to limit processed and reduced fat, um, which is oils and butter. It's only that is what is needed in cooking or in typical oil and vinegar salad dressings. Um, so no butter in your coffee, I guess. Um, you can't drink milk or cream. And don't drink any calories. So no sugar, sugary soda, fruit juices, etc. Don't drink calories. And again, for athletes under 40 years old, six days a week, at every meal, aim to eat more protein than energy. Uh, veggies plus fats based on weight. And why by weight, I mean weight of the meal. So if you're going to eat an eight ounce steak, eat seven ounces of uh, vegetables. Um, you don't need to weigh it. Just use common sense. Don't get too geeky with it. Um, but just use common sense and look at your plate and, and try to eat more protein than uh, energy. Eat protein for snacks. This will be a big change. When we snack, we're used to getting something sweet or something crunchy. Don't. When you're on this diet, you're hungry between meals. You know, grab a chicken breast. Throw some salt and pepper on it, and you're good to go. You'll be surprised how it uh, cures your uh, hunger, and uh, and also it's not uh, it won't be adding a fat or body fat to you. Yeah, eat to satiety. Uh, there's no caloric restriction on these guidelines, so you never need to be hungry. Eat as much as you want. Um, just eat clean. And even doing that, you'll find you'll be able to cut body fat. And then if you're under 40 years old, one day a week, cheat like a mother. And when I say cheat, I mean cheat. You can eat donuts all day, drink beer all day, whatever it is. On your cheat day, go all out and cheat. Um, and eat and drink anything you want. And for athletes over 40 years old, like me, I'm 52, um, seven days a week, same nutritional guidelines as uh, athletes under 40 years old, but no cheat day. And that sucks for you, old timer. 
what I found is that as I've gotten older, my metabolism has slowed down. And uh, if I uh, don't cut the cheat day, uh, it's uh, difficult to stay lean. That's just one of the changes that comes with age. What you experience, you follow these guidelines. Uh, you'll cut body fat and decrease weight size. Or waist size. You'll be surprised. You're going to need to buy some new clothes. Um, you'll eat less at meal time, fewer meals, and less food in general. You won't ever be hungry. Why? Uh, because increased protein and eating whole foods fill you up faster, and you'll be able to go longer without feeling hungry. Um, freedom from food. Um, these food restrictions mean you'll have fewer food choices. And this can be a good thing. Um, but it would be tough if you're a big foodie. I'm not. It wasn't a big, big deal for me, but if you're a big foodie, this is going to be tough. You'll see a declining uh, craving for sweets and bad carbs, bread, potatoes, pasta, etc. Um, if you're eating those all the time now, you start these nutritional guidelines. Um, it'll be tough um, at first, but as you do follow these guidelines longer and longer, your cravings for those types of foods will decrease. This is just an example day on this diet. This is uh, one of my days from uh, recently. Got up the morning, had a, a cup and a half of black coffee and a handful of almonds. I wasn't very hungry at all. Um, I really didn't get hungry till around uh, 11.30. And I had uh, uh, some chicken thighs, a bunch of protein, salt and pepper, a handful of string beans, a few mouthfuls of leftover cauliflower. And after lunch, I had a square of dark chocolate. Um, then I wanted a snack a little bit later. And I had just a couple of uh, slices of non-processed turkey breast. So I looked at the label and there's no sugar, nothing added. It was just sliced turkey breast and with some salt and pepper. For dinner, I had a big salad uh, topped with some fish, a square of dark chocolate for um, after dinner. And with, drink, with dinner, I drank a, a cocktail of tequila, lime juice, and bubble water. Um, so it really um, stuck my alcohol to hard liquor. And of course, today I had a couple cans of diet soda and some water, so I didn't drink any calories. So again, what you'll experience, um, there's not much variety in this uh, diet or nutritional guidelines. Um, and you can only dress up protein and venues and um, vegetables so much, especially the condiments you're using can't have any added sugar. And you start looking at labels, you'd be surprised how many of the condiments, you, condiments you're using now have sugar. What this means, you're going to pretty much eat the same thing every day. Is it sustainable? Yes. And if you're uh, reading this and think yourself, can you never without fruit, milk, bread, etc.? The answer is yes, you actually can. The longer you follow these guidelines, the easier it will be to avoid these foods and eat clean. You can experience some partner family issues at mealtime. You know, if your family is currently eating a typical Western American diet of high carbs, lots of sweets, lots of processed foods, if you follow these guidelines, you'll be eating something different the rest of your family at mealtime. This can cause issues. Um, if you're under 40, you can reduce some of these issues with a cheat day. So the family go out for a pizza on your cheat day, and you can eat alongside with them. Um, but if your partner is a foodie, uh, expect to be called an extremist for a while. And there will be some tension at mealtime. The way I respond to it is it's my body. It's my health. I'll put into it what I think I want to. And it really comes down to being none of your business. So... Um, when the fights get uh, really bad, that's kind of what I come down to. But uh, in general, the longer I've been doing it, the less the tension has been. You'll get some freedoms from food. Freedom from food. You won't be hungry as often. And with the restrictions, many of the foods we treat ourselves with, sweets, ice cream, candy, etc., are off the emotion are off the menu. And the emotional relationship you have with food will be severed. Um, what I mean by that is if you're feeling bad, you'll eat something bad for you. Feeling good, you reward yourself with something bad for you. You know what I mean? You know how, you know how that works. Um, it'll take some time to get over this, but eventually experience freedom from food and won't place nearly as much importance on meals and snack decisions. I still like a good steak, uh, you know, like anybody else, um, but and right now I'm starting to see food as fuel. It's not a way I reward myself or punish myself. You know what I mean? It's just fuel. Um, you'll see an increase, hopefully, in health, mission performance, and fitness improvement. It just feels good when you're light and lean and you perform better. Some common questions. Um, what about rolled oats, quinoa, and other healthy grains? 
Nope, avoid them off the menu. I'm under 40. Are you sure I can eat, drink anything I want on my cheat day? Absolutely. Uh, but what you'll find is after following these guidelines for a while, you won't crave the cheat foods as much. And when you do eat them on your cheat day, you won't feel good. They'll make you feel sick. Slowly, you'll naturally cheat less and less on your cheat day. Still keep it, but you'll just find that when before you're cheating every meal, after a couple months, you're kind of cheating once a meal. And then, uh, you know, pretty soon that your cheat day ends up being just uh, a dessert once a week. The reason? Because it makes you sick to your stomach <laughs> if you do too much of this stuff. Um, you identify my local ideal body weight based on my height. How strong should I be? Now, if you go to mountaintactical.com and search for are you strong enough in the search bar, you'll be directed to MTI's relative strength assessment, which lays out how strong you want to be based on your body weight. So I've got a very specific how strong I want you to be based on your body weight and your athlete type. I guess I should put that down in athlete type. So you'll see when you look at this uh, article, this post, that uh, mountain athletes aren't expected to be as strong per body weight as tactical athletes. Or if you have more questions, feel free to e email me, rob at mtntactical.com. However, I don't argue about nutrition. Um, if you have very strong feelings about nutrition and you want to take issue with these guidelines, keep them to yourself. I'm not going to argue with you. Um, I get asked all the time for nutritional guidelines. Here they are. If you don't agree with them, it doesn't hurt my feelings, and I won't argue with you about it. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, if you have any questions, email me, rob at uh, mtntactical.com.